guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad that you're here. Um, I hope that you have had a chance to look around and look at my channel and my website and all that good stuff. I hope you liked it. I hope that's why you're still here. Um, today's video is going to be talking about grad school. And so most people know that I'm a PhD student at Howard right now. And I do have a master's degree in education that I got from UNLV in 2016. And so a lot of my friends are considering grad school. I have two friends who are starting in the fall. I have a friend whose grandmother was trying to tell her she needs to go get a master's degree, but she felt like it wasn't for her. Um, and it's just something that a lot of people are really thinking about, especially after undergrad. You might not have a job. You might feel like it'll make you more marketable. Um, there's a lot of reasons, but we're going to kind of talk about how you can go through the process of making that decision for yourself, what kind of things you need to think about, what you need to know, be prepared, what it's like to be in grad school or a PhD program. Um, and so, yeah get into it. So obviously there's a lot of places that you could start with um, grad school because there's a lot of choices to be made, a lot of stresses and things that can come along with it. But I would say the first and most important thing to think about is what you're going to get a master's degree in. Um, and so it matters, are you trying to change careers or are you trying to move up in your career? And so my undergrad degree was in fashion marketing. Excuse me. So my undergrad degree was in fashion marketing and business administration. But as you know, I taught kindergarten, and so while I was teaching, I did get my master's in education. So for me, that was a huge career change, obviously. Very different industries, very different practices, and so it was necessary to, one, get a degree, and it was definitely necessary to get it in that specific um, realm. If you are, you know, thinking about an MBA, the world's kind of saturated with people with MBAs, and there's a lot of people who have an MBA and don't have a job, you know, and so is that really worth it for you? Is that something that's necessary? Or do you need to just kind of like revamp your resume and leverage the skills that you already have and reword some things and things like that? So definitely go through the list of what you want to major in. Is this going to be life-changing for me? Is this going to get me to the next step of where I'm going? What is the purpose of me getting this master's degree? And then you can think about where you are going to go to grad school. Obviously, in 2017, we have a million choices between online and class, a hybrid of the both. Um, and you really, really, really have to do what works for you. So my master's degree was on campus in the fall and the spring, and then on the summers, I did take some online courses. I definitely will say, if you are doing a fully online program, you have to, have to, have to, have to have a lot of self motivation and self accountability because it is very easy to forget about it it's very easy to just kind of blow it off put it to the last minute um, a lot of you know online platforms like for example blackboard has an app and it'll remind you when assignments are due some teachers don't use it though so then you don't get the notification you've got to make sure you keep up with your syllabus and so um, just knowing your learning style do you do better in a classroom sitting in front of a teacher having to be there every week what works for you um, definitely also looking at accreditations. There are a lot, a lot, a lot of for-profit schools online that are like, oh, come to our school, we'll give you a degree, it's great, but nobody recognizes us and we are not accredited by any major organization. Um, and if you don't know what accreditation is, it's basically like this system of approvals and like bells and whistles that says you guys this program is great and it meets these educational requirements to really support your students and make them be successful after their time here with you and a lot of schools just don't have it especially for-profit universities then you also need to think about what kind of time commitment you are trying to put into your program so while i did my master's i was working full-time so i went to school in ulv and i lived in vegas so that worked for me for my PhD program, it's very intense, so I knew that I wouldn't necessarily be able to work. So I was willing to move because wherever I was going, I was going to be quitting my job anyway. So for me, it didn't really matter if I had to move across the country. Of course, there were states that I was not willing to live in. I really, really wanted to go to an HBCU and then an HBCU with a PhD program in communications in a city that I was willing to live in literally left me with Howard. But Howard was my first choice of schools in general, so that just worked out. Hallelujah. But, um, you know, I looked at Arizona State, I looked at Stanford, I looked at Berkeley, I looked at a lot of other schools. Um, so just what works for you? Do you have a family? Do you have kids? Do you have a significant other? Like all of those things have to be factored into where you go to school and what you're able to do, what you're capable of. Um, moving across the country by yourself is a lot. Moving across the country to go to school by yourself is a lot. Moving across the country to go to school by your kid with a kid? Couldn't even imagine. Um, <laughs> I mean, I could, but like... It's already hard enough with just me and my dog. So a baby would be like, boop, a lot. 
Um, so yeah, if you have all those factors to consider, make sure you're kind of writing those down, thinking about the kind of support system you're going to have while you're doing this. How long is this program, right? So my master's program took two years, some take one year, some take three years, some take two and a half. Like every single program is very, very different. So once you've gone through the process of figuring out what you want to get a degree in, you can find out what the usual average ones for them are where you know the top ranked schools are what you want to do if you want to do it online if you want to do it in person all those kind of things of course the biggest part is paying for it um some master's programs do have fellowships available and teaching assistance position <laughs> teaching assistantship positions available and so basically you would be responsible for helping a teacher in your similar department so if you were getting an mba you might be helping helping an undergrad marketing professor with like grading papers and tests and things like that. It's a little different than the PhD program, at least at Howard. We actually teach the whole class, which is a little different, but most schools you're just helping another professor. It comes with a small stipend though, so if you have a family, that can be very difficult. If you're moving to a new city and gotta pay moving expenses, that can be difficult. If you're in a city that's as expensive as LA or Washington DC, the cost of living itself is just expensive, and so you may have to supplement that with loans. Um, there are some caps on loans for each year of grad school. Um, like I think your first year of a master's program, I think the cap is like 20000 um, but it's based on the cost of your tuition and all those things. So when you're doing your financial aid applications, you have to make sure that you're putting in the right information to see all of that. And that could like financial aid and all that could literally be a whole entire other video. So I will not get too deep into that. But just know that you need to do your research. Look at the federal government's websites, the education department's websites. Look at the maximum amounts that you're able to receive because... Like for example, I have a fellowship that pays my tuition and it gives me a stipend and then I use my student loans at the max for a PhD student to pay my rent. If I did not have a fellowship, I could not afford both. Like I would not, my student loans would not allow me to take out enough for tuition and living expenses and my rent. Um, and then that would take you into private loans and plus loans that have different interest rates, all that mess. So you really, really, really need to take the time. It sounds daunting and it is a lot, you know, but sit down, take the time to do the research, map it out, look at your savings account. Some master's programs, for example, aren't even that expensive. I know a lot of people who pay theirs out of pocket. Um, where I went to UNLV, it was like between four and $10,000. They might've had savings, their parents, whatever. But you know, sit down, look at it, take the time, relax, and try not to get too overwhelmed by it. But really just look at the big picture financially, see what you can maintain, what you can handle, what you need, and all of that, and you'll be fine. And the last thing to really, really think about, and it probably should be the first thing, actually, now that I think about it, but why are you going to grad school? Um, like I said earlier, my best friend's grandmother, like, was on her, like, you need to go get a master's degree, you need to get a master's degree, and she's like, I wanna work in Hollywood doing film production. I don't necessarily need a master's degree, you know? And so are you going for someone else? Are you going because all your friends are going to grad school and you feel like going to grad school will make you feel like you're doing more with your life or make you feel like you're accomplishing something else? Are you going to grad school because your job told you that they will pay for a free year if you go to school? Or because you know that in order to get a promotion in the next five years, you need to have another degree? Really, really ask yourself those questions. Am I ready to commit back to school, especially if you've been out of school for a while? I only took one year off between um, undergrad and my master's. Was it a year? Well, it was technically like a year and a half because I graduated in like December of 2012. So yeah, I took a year and a half off. So it wasn't too bad trying to get back into it. And then obviously like from my master's to my PhD, I just went straight in and all it was was the summer. If you haven't been in school for like three, four, five years, you need to remember how difficult it is to get through midterms and finals get through those studying sessions, all those essays with them 1500 word minimums. <laughs> um, it's a lot, you know, and are you ready to commit to that? Are you ready to change your lifestyle for that? Are you ready to make the time to be responsible for all of those things again? It's a very big commitment. It's not something to be taken lightly. It's not a small decision. So again, think about what you actually want to get a master's degree in and what the purpose of that master's degree is what type of program you want. Do you want it online? Do you want to be in person in front of a, te a teacher? Do you want the option to do both? Do you want that flexibility? Are you willing to move? Um, what kind of support system are you gonna have? All those factors that you need to remember. How you're gonna pay for it, <laughs> because that is probably the most important piece. And just 
what is your main main reason for wanting to get a graduate degree and yeah just in general also I'll add the workloads are very different in any program my master's degree I felt was like boom give me these A's like knock them out the box while I was working and in school like it was easy this PhD program I do nothing and I still haven't got straight A's <laughs> um, I just go to school and I teach my two little classes but I finished my last semester with two A's and a B and I personally wanted three A's but still like it just it's a lot I literally read anywhere between two to four hundred pages of reading a week um, writing essays on those and having in class discussions leading in class discussions on those readings like it's it's a very heavy workload for my PhD program and they're very different um, so if you guys want like a specific video about my PhD program in comparison to my master's I could um, there are some some differences especially the freedom and like how the programs are structured master's degrees are usually like here's a set of classes that you have to take PhD is like here's a small set of classes you have to take in your first couple of years I mean your first couple of semesters after that go all willy-nilly and do what you want to do um, which is really fun so yeah that is all I do believe if you guys enjoyed this video please like it thumbs up leave comments if you um, want videos like this let me know so I can make them and I will see you next time